In December 1984, the world's worst industrial accident happened here. This factory released a chemical cloud that killed thousands of people in just a few terrifying hours. The accident happened because of a chemical reaction that took place in this tank. A reaction that led to one of the biggest man-made disasters in history. What happened here was seconds that shocked the entire world. Disasters don't just happen. They're the result of a sequence of events locked together in time. The science behind what went wrong is hidden in these seismic seconds. The city of Bhopal lies on the edge of a large lake, almost exactly in the center of India. It is the capital of the region and is growing at a phenomenal rate. With a population of over 1.4 million, this is a busy, bustling and vibrant place. But on the 3rd of December 1984, Bhopal was the scene of a catastrophe on an unprecedented scale, as at least 3,000 people choked to death in a cloud of gas. Many times that number survived that night, only to have their health and livelihoods wrecked, while compensation claims and legal battles continue to rage. The killer chemical was something called methyl isocyanate, or MIC for short, and it came from this plant built at the edge of the city. It has been sealed off from the outside world for over 16 years, preserved by the Indian government as it investigated the cause of the disaster. Perhaps the most chilling artifact here is the actual vessel from which the poison escaped, now dug up from its original underground location. The MIC was released due to an unforeseen and uncontrollable chemical reaction. To explain how it is thought to have happened, several workers at the factory agreed to revisit it for the first time since that terrible night in December 1984. I joined Union Carbide in 1971, where there was actually nothing anywhere. There were just a few small plants. By 1983, we had built this up into one of the most efficient and uh, safe chemical complexes in India. But standards had been deteriorating for some time. And I was being shunted from department to department. I was in safety, then I was transferred to maintenance, at which point of time I decided to quit. In my leaving interview, I mentioned to the management that they are in for trouble if they don't pull up their socks. And that's exactly what happened a year later. Built by Union Carbide, a giant multinational corporation, the factory manufactured pesticide, desperately needed as India struggled to produce enough food to cope with a population explosion. Seven, as the pesticide was called, works by attacking the nervous system of insects. And its production requires some very dangerous chemicals. On that dreadful night in December, those chemicals got out of control. The first person to notice that something was wrong, something that was to lead to the biggest chemical accident in history, was a technician called V.N. Singh. This was our control room, but it looked very different then when it was all quite new. I ran over to the pressure gauge and it went right off the scale. Outside, 40 meters away, the storage tank was about to deliver its deadly load. It was 15 minutes past midnight. The contents of this tank represent the triumph of profits over safety. 
To understand how this happened, we need to wind the clock back four hours. The events that led to the contamination of the tank are still disputed. But the findings of the Indian government point to a disaster that started at approximately 8.15 that December evening, when a plant worker began some routine maintenance. He connected a water hose to part of the plant's maze of pipework. Keeping the system clean was vital, as contaminants could easily be formed during processing. Dirt was supposed to flush out of the system through drainage nozzles, a process that would sometimes take hours. Almost immediately, something began to go wrong. He had unwittingly started a sequence of events that would end with the deaths of thousands. The chemical industry does use a wide range of hazardous materials. For example, we might use sulfuric acid in the manufacture of detergents. The detergents themselves are not harmful, but the sulfuric acid is potentially dangerous. Uh, likewise, there are intermediates that go into the manufacture of shampoo, which, which are made using cyanide. If you're going to carry out a process of that type, you need to be careful. And clearly at Bhopal, they weren't. The disaster's origins lay in the particular way in which Union Carbide chose to make seven. Chemistry is a little bit like cooking. If we're trying to make a molecule like seven here, what we'd like to do is to buy the ingredients off the shelf. We don't want to have to make any complicated intermediates if we can possibly avoid it. The molecule here, seven, is made up of this part, which we can buy essentially off the shelf. More problematic is putting this part on here. The process that Union Carbide used at Bhopal started with the reaction of carbon monoxide and chlorine to make phosgene. Phosgene provided one of the crucial building blocks for methyl isocyanate, or MIC, which in turn became a component of the seven molecule. Phosgene had killed a worker three years earlier in a foretaste of the agony still to come. Ashraf Khan, a maintenance worker, was working in this area. He was wearing a breathing air hood and only dungarees below that. Phosgene splashed onto him and soaked his dungarees. He panicked and he ran for a shower this way. He came here, he removed his hood. The phosgene which had penetrated his clothes evaporated. He inhaled that and he died in hospital a few days later. Phosgene became infamous when it was used in warfare and most infamously during the First World War. It's relatively insoluble in water and when released it creates a white cloud quite close to the ground and I understand smells of new mown hay. Because it's insoluble, if you breathe it in, it won't get absorbed at the upper end of your uh, respiratory tract but will reach the furthest, deepest parts of your lungs. This is a picture of those deep parts of your lungs. It's these membranes that phosgene damages. If you breathe in phosgene, these membranes will be destroyed and blood will flood into your lungs. In effect, you will drown in your own blood. As phosgene was so lethal, the plant only ever stored enough of it to satisfy one day's production. That way, even if there was a release, the scale of the problem would be minimal. But phosgene is merely one ingredient for the chemical that was to kill thousands. The next step in the process is to put this group on. You can do that in a number of ways. You could add on this bit and then that bit, but Union Carbide chose to do it in one go, a single reaction. Now that's cheaper and potentially a lot cleaner, so it has some advantages. The downside is that the chemical we need to do that is methyl isocyanate, which is extremely dangerous.